Hidden in the African savanna is a tree as vast and old as time. Inside it lives the all-knowing Funzi, part robot, part sage, but nobody knows her true age. With help from her young friends at Team Sayari, they learn how to help the planet around me. Armed with cues and clues, they look to solve Funzi's missions with trailblazing adventures and planet-saving expeditions. Your game is totally off today. No, it isn't. Okay, let me just show you. And I shoot. And I score! Call me one shot, Marita. Okay, we get it, you're good. Can we move on now? Funzi, isn't it time for our mission? We can definitely get going on our mission. Mission, mission time. time! Mission time! Team Sayari, your mission today, should you choose to accept it, is to find out what kind of raptors exist in nature and how they contribute to the ecosystem. Raptors? What are those? Let's check in with our friends in Yusei. Maybe they can help. Yusei? What is a raptor? I don't know. It's something that you do to play with. A type of a dinosaur. A dinosaur that usually works in um, groups to take down its prey. Uh, something that, that is used to rub. Oh, they were dinosaurs? It's an animal that looks like a dragon and flies. You say? I always thought raptors were like alligators or something. Yeah, they do sound alike, but raptors are birds of prey. Right, Funzi? Right, and that's today's mission. We're learning about raptors, more specifically, birds of prey. A raptor is an apex predator, which means it is at the top of the food chain. It makes so much sense that hawks are raptors. I'll never forget the time one tried to snatch a chicken wing from my hand. When? The time we were visiting the animal orphanage with my school. Most raptors eat small mammals such as mice and rabbits, reptiles such as snakes and lizards, large insects such as grasshoppers, and so much more. Ew, that does not sound appetizing at all. No, it doesn't, but I'm sure raptors find it absolutely delicious. Yuck. I feel some clues coming on. Clue, clue time. time! Today's clues are a bullseye, an ambulance, a skyscraper, and stilts. Funzi, some help, please. Let's go to Toliwanimi, our field reporter on standby in Lekki Conservation Center in Lagos, Nigeria. How far, Team Sayari? Welcome to Nigeria. My name is Toliwanimi, and I'm at the Lekki Conservation Center trying to figure out those clues that Funzi gave to me. Let's see if I can find someone who can help. Let's go. Um, good day, ma. Good morning. Okay, so what exactly are you looking at? So I'm looking at the yellow bill kite. One of the biggest birds we have around here. Aren't they hawks or eagles? Not all big birds you see are either hawks or eagles. We have different classifications of big birds. So we have eagles, we have hawks, we have kites. What makes them different from other birds? First of all, they're able to fly very high. And then they have very good eyesight. So they can zoom in and see small things like rats, even snakes and chicks. And they're able to swoop down. So they have the strength in their talons, which helps them, gives them an advantage as hunters. Uh, and then their foot also, those talons are very strong and they can carry sometimes even, you know, big, bigger, um, bigger birds than even chicks. If you look at what you call the bill, which is um, the, the, the mouth, what we generally, it's curved and very strong. Why are you so interested in them? They are very peculiar. And one thing that makes them interesting is that even with the changes to the environment, they're able to adapt. So we need to understand how they are managing to still exist within the human um, space. Are they important to the environment? Just like all 
it shows that exist. They have their the role they play in the environment. So if you have rats in the environment and you don't have something controlling the population of that rat, what happens? They become pests. They come into your houses and all that. You have snakes in the environment. Nothing is feeding on them. You have an overpopulation of snakes. So it doesn't look like they are afraid of urban spaces. How are they adapted to human settlements? The yellow-billed kite seems to have adjusted to the changes we've made to the environment. For them, once you have some areas of large trees um, and they can nest, they, they are able to survive. So, and that's the reason why we find them in urban spaces, um, in the middle of people and they are, they are very comfortable. I have learned so much about the yellow bill kites. They are so ferocious, but also so important to the environment. Fast and fierce ferocious flyers. I hope I've helped you guys in the studio to solve the clue. See you guys next time. I think the beak of a yellow-billed kite looks so cool. You know what? It was a yellow-billed kite that snatched the chicken wing off of my hand. They don't play when it comes to food. Hmm, I think the whole food thing can help us with one of our clues. How? The yellow-billed kite is laser-focused when it comes to how they get their food. And they have incredible vision as they zoom in with speed once they've locked in their prey. Bullseye! Oh yes, the bullseye clue. Clue, clue solved. solved! Excellent job, Team S. Just like all raptors in the animal kingdom, the yellow-billed kite hones in their prey and swoops in very fast. More often than not, they always get their target. What clues do we have left? The skyscraper, the ambulance, and the stilts. Let's have a look at fun facts. Maybe they can give us some hints. Fun fact! Did you know that secretary birds are one of two birds of prey that hunt on the ground and not in the air? They use their strong legs, large feet and sharp claws to stomp their prey to death. Yikes! Is it me or does the secretary bird look like it's wearing black shorts? Yeah, it does. I think this has something to do with our second clue. Yes, the stilts clue. Doesn't a secretary bird look like it's on stilts? Yes, it does. The long skinny legs of a secretary bird look like stilts. Clue solved. Solve. Great job, Team S. Now I'm an expert on raptors. <laughs> Exactamondo. Secretary birds frequently kick and stomp on the prey's head until it is incapacitated, especially if the prey is a large lizard or a venomous snake. Wow, that's intense. These birds of prey are rapidly going extinct because of habitat loss, pollution, human-wildlife conflicts, and climate change. Human-wildlife conflicts seem to be a challenge that we keep hearing in our mission. And the list of endangered animals just keeps on increasing. That's why we need to raise more awareness. That's right. The more we learn and understand about the environmental challenges our planet faces, the more progress we can make in changing behavior and mindsets. I'm on board with that. Me too! We're now left with two more clues. The skyscraper and the ambulance. What are you doing, Adarsh? I'm preparing for our rematch. Oh, really? Yes, and I'm going to become the apex predator when I win. Wow, you've really been inspired by our mission today. Yes, I have. And I'm going to use all the skills I learned from Birds of Prey to become a better athlete. Let's get back to learning more about the apex predators of the sky. Maisha is on the ground at Soisambu Conservancy, patching her through. Hi Team Sayari, I'm Maisha and I'm in Soy Sambu Conservancy in Kenya. I'm here on a mission. Fundi's given me a clue, an ambulance, but I don't know what it is. Let's go find out. I wonder if we can get some answers here. Let's check it out. Hello, is anyone home? Hello! This seems to be some type of bird sanctuary. We're definitely learning about birds today. 
This is Simon and he rescues birds of prey. Hi. Hi. Can you mind if you tell me a little bit about this place? Sure. Come along and have a look at one of my new birds. Thank you. What I've got is a new crowned eagle who's got an injured wing. He's called Johnny and he unfortunately was probably shot with a missile. So let's go and put him over there and give him some food. Can I feed him? Sure. Here, you give it a go. Well done. Good boy. Good boy. But why do humans attack eagles? Sadly, there really isn't that much sort of respect for eagles and birds of prey here. And of course, on occasion, these things will kill unguarded livestock and things like that. And where do you get the injured birds from? Um, every different kind of person you can imagine, from wildlife managers to KWS. I don't work just within Kenya, but I've had about three and a half thousand birds go through. Wow. Mm. What led you to have a passion in looking after raptors? I was very lucky because I was introduced to Alana Falcon by the then warden of the Serengeti. And I think one of the chief things that you yourself are learning is that they're actually quite intelligent, easy to empathize with. They can show emotion and affection. And I've had crowned eagles before even defend me. That's amazing. What will happen if all the raptors go extinct? Well, I could argue that there's all sorts of ecological problems, because obviously vultures are very important in cleaning up messes. And to me, the whole of Africa would be impoverished if it didn't have eagles to look up at the sky too. How can Team Sayari help in preserving raptors? Just this experience alone is going to change you, I hope. You'll now look at an eagle next time you see one high up in the sky and appreciate that it's a wonderful thing and really harmless. So yeah, make a fist. And what they like doing is they like putting their hand on top of your fingers so that gives them extra grip. Yeah. Okay, so you kneel down and I'm gonna get his first leg and stick it on your hand. Have you got him? Yeah. Now we can stand up. Yeah. I've learned a lot about eagles today. They're really intelligent and I'm not scared of them at all. You shouldn't be scared of them either. They're really, really great birds. Have you guys figured out the clue? Because I think I have. I can't believe that huge crowned eagle was resting on Maisha's arm. Exactly. And did you know that Maisha mentioned one of the remaining clues? An ambulance. Yeah, what does that mean? An ambulance is used in emergencies to transport injured people. Right. And as we just saw, injured birds are taken care of in Suesambu. And that's how an ambulance comes in. Clue solved. Great job. Eagles, vultures and other raptors are under threat due to environmental decline. That's why places such as the Soy Sambu Conservancy are so important. Three clues down, one to go. It's just the skyscraper clue remaining. Maybe a little inspiration is needed. Let's see what we're making today in Funzi's box. Funzi's box! This is Funzi's box. And as you all know, this is where sustainability meets creativity. Today, using our ingenuity and recycled materials, we're going to fly. We're going to fly our very own homemade kite. Yes, a kite. This is gonna be fun. You'll need different colored crepe paper, broomsticks or any flexible sticks, string, a pair of scissors, masking tape, glue stick, a ruler, stickers or any other decoration, and a pencil. Start by cutting out a big square out of your crepe paper. Cut it to the size you like. The bigger the square is, the easier it will be for your kite to fly. Take one flexible broomstick and position it diagonally. Then tape it on both ends. You want to use light sticks so that the kite is light and can fly in the wind. This is how it's gonna look. Take a second stick and fold it to form a dome shape. It looks like this. Cut the excess and tape it down. Cut some more small bits of tape and use them to fasten where the broomsticks meet to make it secure. The next step is to take a piece of string and attach it to the dome shaped broomstick. Cut down some strips of different colored crepe paper to make colorful ribbons at the end of your kite. Now, you can put more decorations to your kite. Make sure not to use things that may weigh your kite down. Make sure to give it your own personal touch. Whoa! Now that we've made our kite, we can fly it. 
Tell everyone about the endangered birds that need our help and how they play a big role in our ecosystem. Spread the message to Sari. Kwaheri! Fundi Talks! Do you think that the kite and skyscraper are related? I don't know. One flies in the air and one stands in the air. Hmm, there must be a clue in there somewhere. Funzi, can you help us? Let's watch some more fun facts. Fun facts! Ever heard of a flying pig? No? Well, maybe they don't exist. But white-backed vultures are known to make chittering and squealing noises like pigs especially when approaching a delicious carcass to, you know, pig out on it. Let me guess, still prepping for our basketball rematch? Yes, I have to be in tip-top shape in order to beat you. <laughs> Good luck. Moving on swiftly, We've learned that raptors have special skills that make them apex predators. Yeah, they have long sharp talons and sharp eyesight. But none of that was helpful to find our clue. What was that last clue again? A skyscraper. Funzi, I think we need a little more help with this one. I think you'll get more help from our trailblazer in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa, who also happens to work with vultures, patching you through. Morning, Team Sari. I'm Ben Hoffman. I'm from the African Bird of Prey Center and Raptor Rescue. Let me show you something cool. Follow me. All of these vultures are power line victims. They've hit electricity lines and broken wings, so they cannot be released back into the wild. And they're here as full-time ambassador birds for, for their species. Some vultures are critically endangered. We've seen declines of between 80 and 95% across Africa, which puts them into a very vulnerable state. The biggest threat to vultures is electricity lines and poisoning for traditional belief. Some of the myths that are involved with this is that vultures be able, can see into the future and they used for traditional medicine in this way. Um, we, in fact, we now know that vultures just see really, really well. They float around at about 20,000 feet. And what happens, each vulture has an area that it patrols. And when it sees some food, it starts to come out of the sky. And when it starts to go down, the next one sees it going down. So it follows, the next one follows, the next one follows. So you get this network covering a huge area. That's how they find their food. Here yeah, we're busy tracking a vulture. Uh, it has a tracking device on it. This bird was poisoned over a year ago and released, and I'm just checking where it's been and all its details and data that's coming off the bird. We need to know that our rehabilitation process was good, and it's now got over a year's worth of data, so it's been very successful. If vultures disappeared, we would have environmental problems because when something's dead it just doesn't lie there and rot. Vultures come in, they clean it up, they stop the transfer of disease. Team Sari, we need to save the species in the wild because they're very important. Without the species we could get disease transmission from animals to humans, very similar to the COVID outbreak. So we really really need the species to survive in the wild. Uh, a llama what? A llama Gaia. Say that again. Slowly. Llama. Never mind. Let's just call it a bearded vulture. <laughs> yeah, that's better. But I didn't see any beard. If you look closely under the chin, you'll see feathers that look like a beard. Oh, yeah. It's huge. And vultures are also really misunderstood. That's correct, to some extent. Long ago, humans considered the bearded vulture to be very dangerous due to fear of them carrying small babies away. Hmm, wait a minute. This gives me an idea. Our last clue was skyscrapers, right? Right. 
and vultures are always high in the sky looking down on the ground. Yep, that's how they stalk their prey. So they wait for their prey in the sky, just like... A skyscraper! Yes! Mission, Mission complete. complete! Mission complete! Great job, Team S! Like all raptors, vultures have excellent eyesight. This, plus their keen sense of smell, lets them spot carcasses from far away, even when soaring high. And they're also important to regulate the environment. Absolute mondo! And now it's time for a world without. The sky is home to ferocious flyers, known as birds of prey. With eyes like lasers, they can see far, far away. Big, strong talons that hold on and never let go. All that and more, they've got lots to show. Forces of nature, they're at the top of the food chain. Vultures, eagles, these raptors are off the chain. See, a world without birds of prey would be a total mess because these birds sort out the environment like a game of chess. Hovering over the sky, making sure the ecosystem's healthy and clean, misunderstood, looked at like they're mighty mean. But every time you see these raptors flapping their wings in the air, just remember, a planet without these apex predators would cease to be there. Birds of prey are truly important in nature. Thank goodness they're here to help along the ecosystem. We really need to see them differently. Speaking of seeing things differently, it's time you see what a great basketball champ I truly am. Okay, let's go. Wait, wait, you've got to listen to my joke. What do you call a group of birds that are spiritual? Uh, what? I don't know. Birds of prey. Oh, <laughs> that, that's not even funny. Keep working on it, Funzi. <laughs> <laughs>